to talk about um, warnings, uh, the public warnings that go out, and how we stay in touch uh, with the good citizens of Queen Anne's County um, and evacuation notifications, um, where we're going to go and how we're going to get there and, and all that good stuff. So we are going to talk about um, an overview of the public warning systems for the county. Um, we talk about all of the different technology that we have available to us. Um, evacuation planning, um, the evacuation routes that are available to us, and again, some additional resources that we can be thinking about. So, uh, public warning systems, uh, there, there's a lot that's encompassed there. Um, it's, it's like, uh, I don't know, like driving a car. There, there are so many different individual components uh, to the process as a whole that it's good to uh, stop and break it down every once in a while. Um, really what we're after is how do we reach out to the public? Um, and that's, that can be challenging sometimes because you have to reach out to different people in different ways. And uh, when, when, it's, it, when it's something complicated, like uh, a hurricane is coming uh, up the Atlantic coast and it's gonna be here in three days, uh, there's a lot of information, lots of different types of information that need to go out in a fairly short amount of time. And so it's, uh, it's always a fun process of figuring out how to break that down into manageable chunks for everybody. Um, we use, we use uh, different types of technology. Um, we use um, more hardware-based stuff. We're gonna talk about the warning sirens that are here in the county. Um, and we use uh, more high-tech stuff. Um, more and more, you know, it's moving towards using the internet for everything. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the mass notification systems that we use in the county. Um, appropriate lead time is crucial. Um, we wanna give people enough time that they can prepare. Uh, they can take all of the necessary precautions. Uh, think about the emergency uh, planning stuff that we talked about a few minutes ago. Um, but if, if you give people too much notification time, uh, then the message sort of just falls on deaf ears. Uh, the beginning of hurricane season is the first of June. And so you don't wanna stand up there in front of everybody at the beginning of June and say, we're going to have seven hurricanes this summer, so go ahead and get prepared. Everybody's just gonna laugh at you and say, okay, that's fine, I'll deal with it when it gets here. Um, but you also don't wanna say, oh yeah, uh, that hurricane, um, it's gonna be here in like an hour, so uh, uh, you, know, you, you wanna give people an appropriate amount of time to take the necessary actions. Um, and redundancy um, is, is crucial as well uh, for us. Uh, the system redundancy is crucial because we want to make sure that we have multiple ways of getting important information out. Um, I think it's important to the audience. It's important to who's receiving the message as well. Uh, if you only have radio and we're only putting out messages on the TV, then you're not going to get the important message. We have to reach everybody in, in multiple ways. So the siren system that we were talking about um, the, the siren system is in place for Queen Anne's County, Caroline County, and Talbot County. So our, our part of the, the, the middle part of the Eastern shore, um, the, the sirens date back to, uh, the, the Cold War, uh, civil defense era, and they've been used for a lot of different things over the years. Um, they were used strictly for tornadoes for a while, uh, but that, uh, didn't generate enough use out of them because we don't get tornadoes terribly often. Uh, so now the sirens are used for any sort of um, disaster situation, any sort of immediate hazard uh, type situation. Um, tornado is still a great example of that. Uh, they, they sound an awful lot like uh, the fire department sirens that you hear attached to the firehouses. Um, but we, we have illustrated up here um, what the difference in the tone is uh, between your average firehouse signal and uh, how long they last, um, hopefully to get you thinking about it. They test the siren system the, now I can't remember if it's the first Saturday or third Saturday, but once a month they test the, fire, the, the siren system. Um, so in each of the three counties, wherever the sirens are, um, You'll, you'll hear them going off on one of the Saturdays. Uh, so I don't know if anybody's 
uh, heard those or experienced those before. Uh, they can be kind of jarring if, uh, if you don't know what to expect, uh, but that's why we, we want to get the information out there. So uh, it won't scare you when it's not an emergency and you'll know what to do about it when it is. Uh, for the websites and social media, uh, that's one of the best ways for us to get emergency information out there. Uh, we always have the, uh, the main DES website. Uh, George and Ted do a great job of maintaining the Queen Anne's County website. And every time that we put out uh, notifications or evacuation notices or anything like that, uh, they're great about making sure that all of the county uh, information is, is up to date and everybody knows what's going on. Uh, social media gets more and more popular every single day. I don't need to tell you guys that. And so it's, it's constantly a battle to make sure that we are on the forefront of all of that and, and making sure that as, as people uh, do this more than they just speak with one another or pick up the phone and call somebody, uh, that we still get the important information out there, that we still um, not just deliver information but, but have a dialogue. Um, you know, feedback is important and input is important. And one of the greatest things about Facebook uh, that I think that I think some of the other social media platforms don't capture as well is that ability to have a conversation. Uh, last, last summer with Hurricane Sandy, we were posting information about road closures. And as soon as we put information up there on, on our Facebook site, uh, people were commenting to us, uh, you know, is this going to affect uh, my, my, my drive home or, um, you know, I was just, I was right there or I live around the corner. It's actually, you know, bigger than what you posted. Uh, so you have to do some fact checking to make sure that the information that's coming in uh, from the other people is, is factual. Uh, but it's great because, you know, you, you just drop the line in the water and then all of a sudden everybody is there to help you deliver the message and uh, help help get more information out there. So our, our mass notification system, um, this might be my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, I manage our mass notification system for the Department of Emergency Services. And uh, if, if, the, if the name reverse 911 rings a bell, uh, it's, it's the same technology, it's a similar product, um, you know, Reverse 911 is to mass notification systems what Kleenex is to facial tissues. It's, uh, it's a brand name that uh, became popular and now everybody uses it. Uh, but mass notification is us recording a message um, and then sending it out to the general public. And there are lots of different ways that we can do that. Um, but the quickest and easiest way, I guess, to explain it is if your number, if your telephone number is in the phone book, then we already have your home telephone number in the mass notification system. If you have a cell phone or an unlisted number, um, you know, if you want to get text messages from us, if you want to get emails, uh, we can do all of that. And you can plug in lots and lots of different contact paths. Um, but if, if we don't have your information, um, then we can't send you some of these, some of these messages that go out. And, you're not going to get calls from Department of Emergency Services or the health department saying, hey, this is Jim, just want to check in and make sure everybody's having a nice day. Uh, when you hear from us, it's going to be an emergency and it is going to be uh, critical, vital information. Uh, it's, it's something that we don't take lightly. It's, it's certainly not a system that we want to abuse uh, because if we do that, then people stop paying attention. And when people stop paying attention, public safety is jeopardized and we're just making more work for ourselves in the long run. Uh, so uh, I would say one of the biggest things that you could take away from this is uh, if, if uh, your telephone number is not listed or if you want to get notifications on your cell phone or through your email, um, please go to qac.org, which is the county's homepage, and in the upper left-hand corner, uh, click the register for Blackboard Connect link and it'll walk you through the rest of the registration process. Or again, grab one of my business cards, call me, shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to walk you through it as well. So, the warnings go out and now we have to evacuate. 
Is that a picture of everybody trying to get out of New Orleans at the exact same time before Hurricane Katrina was coming? Um, the, the picture is actually a, a little bit of a wider angle. I had to cut it a little bit <clears throat> uh, so that it would fit. Uh, but what you see here is people driving um, in both directions on Interstate 10 to get out of the city. Uh, you know, for miles and miles and miles, they shut down traffic uh, in the opposite direction to maximize everybody getting out of Dodge. Uh, hopefully, we won't have to deal with a situation like that anytime soon uh, or, or ever, uh, but these are the kinds of things that we want to be thinking about. Um, you know, what sorts of hazards do we need to be prepared for? Um, what are the kinds of situations in which we would have to leave? Um, how long are we going to be gone? What do we need to take with us? How are we going to get there? Um, the county is going to be using the mass notification services that we just talked about uh, to reach out to as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, uh, to, to deliver some of that information. Uh, we're going to say, you know, you're going to want to go north, so get on 301 or go through Delaware, or you're going to want to go west to get away from whatever the threat is, uh, so everybody be nice to each other as we're all going over the Bay Bridge, uh, whatever the case may be. 50 and 301 uh, really are uh, the, really the only viable options, unfortunately, uh, for us to, to evacuate here on the Eastern Shore, uh, at least uh, in our part of the shore. Um, we, had, we had somebody call our office at some point last week and say, uh, hi, DES, I'm Joe Citizen, and I want to know what our evacuation plan is. And that's, that's kind of a tough spot because you don't want to tell somebody we, we don't have a plan for it. And the truth of the matter is we do have a plan. And it's, it's as easy as that. Go to 50 or 301 and get out. It's as easy as that. Um, when when the, the time for evacuation does come, um, we, have, we do have a plan. Uh, when I say we, I mean... Uh, the eastern shore counties of Maryland, Delaware, and Virginia, everybody on the Delmarva Peninsula. We have a peninsula evacuation plan where it's phased, so everybody in the south and the east goes first, and then everybody kind of creeps up and gets to the, to the north until the entire peninsula is evacuated. So it's not always going to be that big. Um, hopefully we never get to that point. Uh, but should we need to do that, um, everybody is on board. Uh, everybody, the emergency managers are all on board to help facilitate this process. Uh, so we're going to make it easy as possible, but everybody needs to understand that you know, traffic is going to be congested. Um, people are going to get overwhelmed. Uh, so we want to consider, uh, consider some things uh, that are going to make the process a little bit easier. Uh, fuel is going to be limited, so as soon as you start getting word of stuff that might be a problem for you, you know, we're going to want to go ahead and, and gas up the truck as much as possible. Um, all those emergency supply kits that we've worked so hard to assemble for ourselves and our families, we're going to make sure to grab those. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't have to worry about the people who are in the room right now. I know that you guys have a kit. I know that you guys are prepared. I know that you guys are tuned in and you're going to listen. I'm worried about everybody out there. I'm worried about the people who don't care to come to stuff like this, who don't care to be proactive, who don't care to educate themselves. Those are the people who I have to worry about are going to be rushing to the store at the last minute, trying to buy all the, the, the bread and the milk and the eggs and stuff, and none of it's there because the people who are tuned in, who are educated about it, uh, have already gotten all of their necessary items, all of their precautions. Um, so we're going to want to leave early. We're going to want to avoid the, uh, the last minute rush. Um, we keep talking about sheltering in place. And I, I realize that we've sort of skirted around shelter in place a couple of times. Um, that's a whole nother class for a whole nother time that DES can come out and do. If you're interested in, in getting that for your, uh, for your communities, we can talk more about sheltering in place and all of the planning and procedure and stuff that goes along with that. Um, you know, so many people, um, 
people have such a wide variety of living situations that it's hard to sit here and tell somebody everybody needs to have you know this kind of plastic sheeting and these sorts of household supplies in order to make that a viable option for you you really have to tailor that more towards people's individual communities uh, so i'm not trying to avoid the shelter in place topic but understand that that's something that you have to think about yourself um, and and be uh, be planning for and be prepared for some of our additional resources um, some of these websites look uh, sort of like some of the websites we looked at last time. Um, the, the county's homepage, uh, like I said, is where you're going to want to go to register for Blackboard Connect. Uh, the OSHA.gov page, um, yeah, that's occupational uh, uh, safety and health. But uh, they actually have a surprisingly large and diverse uh, selection of planning tools for evacuation. Um, a lot of it is geared towards the workplace, but it's really easy to just erase workplace and write in uh, home or church or school or wherever. Um, you know, it's, it's the concepts. They're, they're universal. Um, and, and OSHA has some great tools. Uh, the roads.maryland.gov is the state highway website. Um, they have the most up-to-date <clears throat> up excuse me, uh, list of road closures for the state. Um, any suggested evacuation routes and plans are going to be up on the, the state highway page. Um, so that's a must if evacuation uh, becomes a thing. And I think that's about all I've got for you. Do so we have questions about warnings and evacuations? Yeah. I, I have two. Excellent. Um, are there special considerations for Kent Island? Special considerations for Kent Island. Um, we, uh, we have special traffic management plans uh, for the Route 8 area because that's right there at the bridge and because stuff gets really, really congested there. Um, it's also very prone, prone to flooding uh, right there in that whole area. So everything that can go wrong can go wrong right there at that, at that intersection. Uh, so for the entirety of Kent Island, um, no, we don't have any special, um, special unique plans or considerations um, outside, of the, uh, outside of the Route 8 traffic management plan. Uh, but because Kent Island is more susceptible than lots of other areas in the county to the inclement weather, uh, to the flooding and stuff that goes along with that, Ken Island is usually one of the first places that we call when we have to pick up the phone and say, hey, you guys might want to think about getting out. When was the last time that, uh, like, Ken Island had to be evacuated? Was it Irene? Mm -hmm. And there were... Two years ago? Yeah, Irene was 2011. And, you know, some people will tell you we did a great job with it. Some people will tell you that it was absolutely deplorable and they made people move out of the county and whatever. Uh, you know, you're always going to have people with mixed reactions. Uh, what I can tell you is there were a lot of valuable learning opportunities. There always are. Uh, but to my knowledge, we didn't have uh, any loss of life from that. And so we consider that a success to a, to a certain degree. Um, I personally would rather issue an evacuation order and then have the storm completely miss us and say, well, yeah, I understand you're upset that I made everybody leave and now you have to come back and you know, take days off of work and whatever. Um, but hey, everybody's alive, everybody's safe. That's, that's my number one priority. We have family in Davidsonville. Um, we live right on the water at... Uh, um, Chester River, what is that the river, Chester? Um, the other little condo is Qu uh, Queens Landing, mm -hmm. right there. So assuming that, that um, the island had to be evacuated, would we be okay just shooting over to Davidsonville? Or when you're evacuating, are you, I mean, really, Getting out, getting out. At, at Queen's Landing, 
uh, you're, you're in a better position than some people in the county. Um, I would rather be at Queen's Landing than all the way at the very southern tip of Ken Island. Um, it takes a long time, especially when there's water in the roadways, um, right. to get from there up to 50. Um, I, I can't really tell you that one way is better than any other way. Um, what I can tell you is I know that the majority of people on Ken Island have uh, cars and trucks, which is great. Um, we, were, we were sort of joking at work not too long ago that everyone who lives on Ken Island ought to have a boat. Um, it was mostly facetious, but there's an element of truth to that as well. Um, you know, we always want to be thinking about redundancy. We always want to be thinking about the what ifs. Uh, you know, what if the roads are flooded and I can't drive? What if all of a sudden I ran out of gas? You know, if, if you've got a boat and, and you can paddle out or, you know, putz out with the, the outboard motor, then, then you, you've got a way of going somewhere where you're not going to be trapped. Yes. Um, the, the, the notifications that we send out, uh, we, we don't pick and choose when we send stuff out. Um, we, we don't say, okay, it's January. Uh, we had a long Christmas and we don't, we don't feel like doing winter storms this year. Um, the, the, the staff of DES are, are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, especially holidays. Um, people like to do stupid, stupid stuff on holidays. Um, but we're, we're always there and we're always ready to respond to whatever needs to happen. So if that's sending out ambulances or fire trucks, then we're going to be there. If it's getting an evacuation notice out to everybody, we're going to be there. Um, we don't sleep. Thank you. Any other questions? I have some yes. Inside. Did you just move to the island? Yeah. All right. Let me give you a little bit of insight. So if there's a major blizzard, are going to be out of everything on the shelves. But then because the bridge shuts down a lot of times, it's going to take days after everything's opened up for those trucks to get back in for food. So you always should have food, water, because it takes the island just longer to recover. And then with Irene also, we had plenty of notice that there was going to be an evacuation, and they even told us what time you're going to shut down the bridge. So they shot it out through everything. Everyone on the island knew what was coming. You have a, a great point. Um, I, I wasn't here in Queen Anne's County for uh, Isabella or for Irene. Um, but, you know, Connie was talking about the, the emergency operations center that we activate. And um, that it's not just DES and the health department. DPW is there. Law enforcement's there. State Highway is there. Uh, everybody is there. Um, <clears throat> We have a great partnership with um, the Maryland Transportation Authority that operates the Bay Bridge. And so when they even start to entertain the idea of maybe we need to shut down the bridge, we're, we're going to be right there alongside them for the decision-making process. And that's the kind of information that we get out. And, you know, Ken Island has priority for that because they're right there. Mm -hmm.